Hello, everybody. It's uh, it's Bible time. <laughs> Just outside, enjoying this weather. The ducks around, and my daughter's on the. Oh, there's the ducks. My daughter's on the trampoline. Say hi, Honor. Hi. <laughs> Can't really see her very well, but my boys are out on the wood pile way at the backyard. You can kind of see him way back there. <laughs> oh, how do I do that? There, there, right there. Anyways, yeah. So, I've been kind of hunkered down in Galatians lately. Chapter 5, there's just so much good stuff here. Um, yeah, anyways, so, <clears throat> I'm reading in chapter 5, and, uh, Hey ducks, you're too loud. <clears throat> and um, it's been talking about our freedom in Christ. And, <clears throat> you know, when Paul was talking to the Galatians about it, he's kind of doing it in conjunction with how they have kind of walked away from grace and gone back into the law because other teachers had come in and basically deceived the people and Paul was kind of scolding them for being so ignorant and walking away from the gift that they'd been given, thinking that if, you know, now that they've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, what makes them think that, uh, you know, their acts of goodness are going to make them righteous and keep them righteous and make them worthy of, of the gift of God when they already received the gift of God for free? Um <clears throat> Anyways, so th that's kind of the surrounding premise of this. Hi, honey. Don't go on the camera, okay? Or mama, you won't let me post it. <laughs> Anyways, my girls like to be around when I'm doing this, but they're not allowed to be in the video. <clears throat> Anyways, so it's talking about the freedom that we have in Christ in chapter 5. <clears throat> and... Um, Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm just going to read from uh, verse 13, and it's talking about the freedom that you have, right? So it says that God is. It says that God has called us. You can read it. It's in chapter five. I start in verse 13, and I'm just going to paraphrase just so I can talk here. So basically, he's saying, you know, God called you to this life of freedom. And you've received Holy Spirit and you know that freedom is to give you the ability to love others and to do ministry and not be worried about constantly breaking specific laws all the time um, in order to be righteous before God and have connection with him and you know that grace allows us a lot of room to move um, in this life when we're when we're with people, right? Um, so, <clears throat> a lot of times, because of the grace that we've received, believers seem to think that, you know, that gives us this leeway. And so, we tend to be kind of laissez-faire about, about our faith, about um, acting in holiness, um, actually trying to live in holiness and to be like Christ in that sense of living a holy life um, and to pursue a life of holiness um, overcoming sin in the flesh because you know make no mistake we obviously live in a body of flesh and that flesh has desires in it um, that are not of God and so it causes temptation and we have to disagree with that temptation um, and that the transformation into the image of Christ in our in our outward appearance happens through the renewing of our mind which is actually worship um, towards God becoming more like Christ and if you read Romans chapter 12 that's what it's talking about about how 
renewing our mind transforms us into the image of Christ and it is a reasonable act of service and it actually proves um, that God is good it it proves his will is perfect and good <clears throat> and yeah and then that's that ministers to people just by you living your life now when we do the opposite when we act with this freedom when we walk in sin and practice sin it proves the exact opposite okay or at least it looks like it proves it so we look like hypocrites and it it makes God look bad because we are supposed to be walking uh, in the image of Christ um, being renewed daily in our mind so that we're we're essentially his ambassadors here on earth so when we don't act in accordance with that obviously it gives him a bad reputation um, and it doesn't display the image that we are meant to bear which is Christ um, so in verse 13 he says beloved God has called us to live a life of freedom in the Holy Spirit um, but don't view this amazing freedom as an opportunity <clears throat> to set up a base camp of operations uh, in the world or in this in the fleshly realm um, and it goes on to say that essentially the paraphrase is that like freedom freedom means that you become so free of the flesh or self-indulgence to the flesh constantly giving into it that you're able to serve other people in love that you're able to serve them uh, not always thinking about yourself but but being able to operate in uh, agape love which is self-sacrificial which is um, you know the expression of Christ's love on earth was agape love where he sacrificed himself um, to prove his love or to manifest his love to us so that we could see it in its fullness so if we want to operate in that same type of of lifestyle that's the way that we do it is by renewing our mind to his word and then choosing to agree with him and to take steps um, to become more like him now that comes by giving up the things of the flesh and actually warring against them it says love completes the laws of God and all of the law can be summarized in one great statement you demonstrate love to your neighbor even as you care for and love yourself so there's a lot of self-love in our culture where it's you know the I generation you know the iPhone iPad Everything's about I, 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 me, 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 right? And that's our culture. You know, how do I feel? I'm offended. All of these things, right? And I find that even us as Christians, we get sucked into it because we're around it so much. And if you keep consuming something, especially when we're consuming so much media, we tend to take on the characteristics of the culture. Even when in our heart of hearts, we really know um, we know that these things are wrong when we can take some time and be quiet before God and think about it we know that it's wrong and yet we keep consuming it and what you continue to behold you become right so when we keep beholding the things of the world we start to look like it it's the same as how God calls you to renew your mind right and be transformed by the renewing of your mind according to Romans 12 when you behold him in his word and you spend time with him in prayer and you worship him and you thank him for what he's done, you start to look more like him. The same is true when you behold the world, you behold the things of the world and the things of the flesh. Over time, you start to look more like that. And it's really difficult for that not to happen. <laughs> um, which is why you got to stay grounded in the word so much. So it he goes on to say if you criticize and come against each other over little things you're like a wild beast and you're trying to destroy each other 
And that's obviously not what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, it also says here going on, it says, as you yield uh, freely and fully to the dynamic life and the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's cravings hinder you from your old self from dominating you. They are incompatible, those two forces. Um, you are a new creation. Your spirit has been created new. You also have your old life, your flesh, the old man, as the Bible calls it, is constantly trying to rear its head through acts of the flesh. And you, you can really only see those things by being steeped in the Word so that you can decipher what's of God and what's of the flesh. Sometimes it gets a bit muddled, um, mostly having to do with your rights. Um, you know, I, my rights, I have the right to be this, or I have the right to be offended, or I have the right to call these people out, or I have the right to do this, or the right to do that. When you start getting into my rights, <clears throat> You start to slip. I. It doesn't mean that you have no rights. Oh, sorry guys. <clears throat> My head shines here. It doesn't mean that you have no rights legally in the world. Obviously you do. And they're there to protect you. But when you as a Christian start to operate in the world. And the rights that you have in the world. <clears throat> it can really start to muddle um, your ability to walk as Christ in this world. Um, really we should our rights are in Christ and our right is to not be offended our right is to sacrifice ourselves as Christ sacrificed himself um, and obviously that's something that we do daily and it takes time um, that's why there's a grace obviously we screw up um, we don't always walk this thing out perfectly <clears throat> but our but our goal here is to walk in holiness and righteousness and have a relationship with Him and and to walk in faith that even if we aren't operating in our rights in the world, if we're, if we're not being given our rights, we're still free. Um, we're free to give up our life. And we, act, we can't die. We can't, we can't die. <laughs> so... To ultimately even give up our life we still win so when we take away that ability for the world to destroy us then we actually become free because then we're not tethered to this body we're not tethered to the physical only so it makes us free to be able to serve people without the fear of losing even if we lose everything we still we still win <clears throat> so a lot of those things are tied to the holding on to this life. And Jesus said, if you try to hold on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll gain it, right? So he'll give it back to you. If you, if you give it up, he'll give it back. But if you hold on to it, it'll slip through your fingers. Um, are you holding on to your life? Are you holding on too tight? <laughs> what are you not letting go of? What is it in your life that you think you have to hold on to? Otherwise, stuff will fall apart. What will you not let go that you know is sin in your life and yet you will not give it to him? What is it? There's levels of these things, right? There's things that people see on the outside and there's things that people don't see and it's on the inside. Things like offense, having an offense towards someone. People don't always see it. Um, that's a bit of a hidden enemy. In the flesh <clears throat> it's easy for people to see things like the things that a lot of Christians rail against like homosexuality in the church or transgenderism or <clears throat> the government's greed and they're taking over and all these things that <clears throat> obviously as Christians we understand that um, God has seen them and called them sin <clears throat> but there are other sins that are equally as bad um, yeah, 
offense towards our brothers. I was reading the other day, you know, Jesus saying, if you call your brother an idiot, you're in danger of the fire of hell, you know. <clears throat> That's like basically if you slander your brother <clears throat> or your sister, it's it's just as bad as anything else. I mean, the consequences here may not look as bad, but before God, they're the same thing. It's you're basically disparaging the image of God and your brother and sister. So, you know, whether we're a drug addict, alcoholic, you know, fornicating <laughs> government worker <laughs> you know whatever <clears throat> no offense to government workers uh you see the joke anyways um yeah it, it we all have things we have to overcome <clears throat> and we shouldn't be using our freedom in christ to just say oh whatever it's okay we really do need to war against the flesh and that war really begins in our mind what do we believe what do we agree with so what are you agreeing with? Are you agreeing with things that you know are not of God? There's so much stuff what's going on today. There's so much stuff that I could get upset about and become offended about. And I have and I've had to repent of it. Especially recently with all the government stuff happening and the COVID stuff, the riots, um, all the racism stuff. Uh, there's just so much going on that we can be offended about. And yet... That's not what we've been called to. We've not been called to be offended. We've been good. we've been called to love people. Um, that does come by telling the truth, but telling the truth in love, actually sincerely wanting to see people um, changed and set free from the bondage of this life. <clears throat> so, anyways, hope that helps you guys a little bit today. Be encouraged. God's grace is on you. Um, repentance is only a, a thought away to disagree with sin and to agree with God you can do that today is a new day there's always, uh, there's always another chance while you're still alive on this earth so yeah I hope that helped be encouraged you're not forsaken Love you guys. God bless you.